What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about the Zemo Board 2. If you're not familiar, Zemo Board 2 is Ice Whale's second iteration of the Zemo Board. It has upgraded architecture to it with new hardware and some more that we're going to talk about. And it's just an upgraded Zemo Board 2. I actually have one right here. You can see, it's actually really nice looking. It comes in a cast aluminum case. We have a built-in heatsink now, built out of the cast, and if you pre-ordered it or you or added it on, you get this nice external fan to help with some of the cooling. Similarly to the original Zima board, we have our SATA ports. We now have two and a half gig networking, two USBs, our power plug, and then over here we have a mini HDMI for some video output. But overall, I've been working with this for the last couple days since it came in, and I have to say that I really do like it. I really like the way that the first Zemo board looked, and I really like the way that the second Zemo board looked. The silver, or the gray, however you want to call it, does kind of throw me a little bit. I wish maybe it was a little bit of a darker color, but that's just me being picky. And for a nice SBC, I think this is a great option to do some lightweight projects or some other simple stuff onto it. Today we're going to talk about some of the setup. And some of the projects that we can run it's still very early on i just like i said i just received it the other day but i figured let's talk about it because i have it and it's brand new one thing i will mention to start is if you were some one of the people who got this auxiliary fan add-on it was kind of confusing for me at first because i didn't want to read the instructions all the way for how to install it so if you notice we have these torque screws that are not focused nicely we have these torque screws like over here and in the four corners to install this fan you're going to remove the four torque screws and then this bottom plate right here is going to come up. From there, it's going to expose the bottom end of the motherboard. There's going to be a header on the fan right in this corner. And you can see there's a little indent in the case for it. And you can plug the header in for the fan. You can replace the case and re-screw the torque screws. And then over here, you're just going to pull out one of the side ones right there. Again, sorry, it's not focusing too well, but you can have an idea. It's right there. And that's how you're going to mount this fan on. And then that's how you would do it. Like I said, I rushed through it and I didn't want to read the instructions and I sat here saying, how come it doesn't work? And then I looked it up again and I realized that I'm just a silly goose. But if you do have the add-on fan, that's how you could do it. I'm going to cable mine up really quick. I have the Y SATA cable so I can break out the two hard drives. And today we're going to talk about some of the setup. So I'm going to get this set back up and then we're going to go into the new Zemo board too so we can talk about some of its features. So I mentioned how there's some new hardware on the new Zemo board too compared to the first generation. And some of those differences are going to be we have a new generation of Intel processors in there. So versus the first generation that had the Intel Celeron N350 or descendant on which variant you got, you might have had a different one. We have the Intel N150 Twin Lake generation with a possibility of four cores or there are some other variants similar to how they make most of their boards. They do it in like a package kind of model where there might be different tiers to what hardware you get. Additionally, the RAM when these boards was different. They offer higher clock speeds, and again, depending on the package, you could either get eight or 16 gigabytes of memory in your SPC. The EMMC was offered in either 32 or 64 gigabyte variants. You either have 32 or 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. A big change that was done on here was the PCIe slot, so it's a Gen 3 by 4 slot, so it's pretty much offering better usability for stuff like graphics cards and other add-on cards. The big push for this board was being able to run the AI and different models and stuff like that, among other projects that you could do. So they really added an upgrade to the PCIe slot for stuff like that so you can get better use out of graphics cards, network cards, whatever you might be using it for. There was an upgrade to the network ports, so it went from 1 gig to 2.5 gig networking. We went from two Gen 3 USB ports to two 3.1 USB ports. On the hardware side, that's really about all the big changes. Other than that, we had the new case like I mentioned and some other small stuff, but really those were the big hardware changes from the first generation to this new generation of the Zemo Board 2. Now that we talked about some of the hardware specs that changed over, let's go into the actual Zemo Board 2. See, I already did my initial setup, but when you first boot yours up, you're going to be able to find the IP, and then you can go into the web portal. It's going to load right into it, and it's going to go through the initial setup of making a user account if you want to set up any sort of storage. You could skip through it and you could set it up later or you can mess with it now. I, I skipped through it so I can set it up later. So I'm just gonna log in really quick. And over here, you can see this is the basic homepage. So some of the new stuff that they did come with is this Zima remote access. So if we come over here and click on it, they made the Zima client, which you can see, I can click over here and they actually have their own software now that you can download. So I believe from what I'm seeing, the idea is if you have multiple Zima devices, you can kind of make like a VPN network to access all of them. Let's say your remote or whatever it is, they have a mobile app 
and everything like that. So they're just trying to kind of step their game up to have more features for their hardware, which is it's something cool to see. But they are making it so you can set up remote access to your devices. Another feature they added was over here at the ZVM. And you can come over here and you can actually virtualize right off of the Casa OS now. This was really a game changer because you can do some virtualization right off of your Zoom board. You don't need additional hardware or, you know, change the install to Proxmox or something different. You could do it right over the box from here. However, I don't know how the performance is going to be because, again, we talked about the hardware and something like Windows probably won't run super great off of this. But we can see. Other than that, for the most part, it's going to be very similar to the first generation of the Zima board. The hardware, of course, changed, but the overall concept is still the same. It's a single board computer that's made to be very hackable and, and can be used for tons of different projects. So if you want to make it into file storage, network stuff, you can make it into a router or all the other projects. We still have our app store similarly to the original Zima board and the Zima Blade and probably the Zima Cube. Unfortunately, I never got to work with one of those. But you can see we have all our apps right over here. And similarly, if you need to add one, you could just go and add a custom Docker image. One thing I want to talk about is the storage over here. So you can see I have my EMMC currently shown. But if I click on the settings, I can create storage. So I do have two hard drives that I have connected. So I'm just going to show you really quick how we can make a pool. So we can click start. And we can combine. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to make a RAID. You could either do a JBOD or just a bunch of disks. There's no redundancy in case something does fail. So if you do lose a disk, you're going to lose all the data most likely. Usually a RAID's a little bit safer, but remember RAID is not a backup. It's just a precaution. They do give you the option to go with a RAID 0 if you want. And something that's really nice is they actually break down all the items you need for the RAID and what it's going to do. This is nice because I don't need to go open up like the Seagate or the Synology calculator for RAID. I could just have an idea right here what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a RAID 1. I'm going to click Next. I can select my two disks that I want to work with. And then I can change my pool. So, or, or the storage name. So I'm just going to call it Zima Pool. And you can see I'm going to have a RAID 1 with two disks and one terabyte of capacity. I'm going to confirm and we're going to click Create. Now, the Zima board is offered to be able to have quite a bit of storage. So I'm going to pull that up really quickly. And you can see already that the the RAID is already built out and I have it so I have my file storage over here. We're going to come back to this in a few minutes. I just wanted to talk about the storage capabilities of this device. So I just came over to the Zima Board 2 page over here off of Icewell's website and if we actually start scrolling down, one of the first things they mention is build your own mini NAS. Again, something that is a really good focus for this project because it has perfect hardware for a NAS and capabilities. If I scroll down a little bit more, we have another hit for backups and storage like that. Another thing we can focus on for project-wise. But over here you can see we have up to 36 terabytes of capacity based off what they're saying. Now you would have to do some sort of breakout with like an HBA or something similar. Because we only have the two onboard SATA ports. So I guess if you have like an HBA or some sort of breakout card for M.2 or NVMe storage, that could work as well. Or maybe you have really large hard drives and you're going to do it over SATA like 18 terabytes to get up to the 36 terabyte mark. I don't know. But storage is one of the big projects that they talk about. It's really simple. So like if I do come back over here, like I mentioned, I'll close this out for a second. I'll close this. If I come back to the dashboard over here, I can click files and you can see it's going to open up in a new tab. Over here on the left, I have my Zima pool and we could do something as simple as I can click new folder. I can do Zima share. Now it's created. Now I can click on it, I can click these three dots, I can share via Samba, I can set any permissions I need if I need to change anything, if I need to add like a, another account for access, I can click create, bam, I have a network share already built out, and here's to access it over Windows, so if I come into my Windows Explorer, if I paste that path in, you can see I get the warden to sign in for my credentials, and now over here, I have my network share we just built off the Zima board, I can add in a new text file. If I come back over here, you can see it's available. If I want to remove it, I can move it to trash. And if I come back over here, it's already gone. So we just made network storage in two minutes, if that. This is probably the fastest method I've ever done to make some sort of network storage in any project that I've done versus the Docker containers, Open Media Vault, TrueNAS, anything. I mean, from making the RAID and storage pool to making the network share, we probably did that in five minutes, if that. So 
definitely using the Zima board too for network storage or a NAS or anything else is really, really a good option. Now I was taking a look through here and we don't have anything like Open Media Vault that I was seeing. I mean, I'm searching over here and I guess it doesn't search um, very well. I guess they don't have super great fuzzy searching. But if I scroll down, we don't really have anything like Open Media Vault. I'm going to bet there is another container they have in here for storage. I'm just going to look really quick. So they do have a cloud category over here. So you can see we have something called File Drop. It's probably another Docker container. Um, I haven't heard of it before, which is fine. Uh, we have File Browser. We have Duplicity, which is just a replication one. We have a sync tool and then there's Nextcloud. I am familiar with Nextcloud. We've worked on it before. You can make your own cloud running off of your Zima board and you could have storage and calendars and pretty much the Nextcloud version of an office suite. But unfortunately I don't see like an actual like Open Media Vault or other kind of SMB storage option in here. So here's a Nextcloud with SMB, but nothing too crazy. But Again, you could just sit here and you can make a network share right out of your file explorer and it's just easy as that. I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, but like I said, there is a lot of projects available in here and they do add the capability to install more. And even more, if you don't like the Casa OS, you can install Debian or Ubuntu or something else and you could build something else off of it if you do want. An idea that I was having to do with my Zima War 2 was do some secondary storage for my Proxmox backup server. So I could build out a share and have my Proxmox backup server replicate the backups over to it. And if I ever need, I could pull them off of that. So it's kind of just another way to have that disaster recovery or 321 backup method. I don't really want to put stuff into the cloud when it comes to my virtual machines. So it's just a good option to have a secondary storage locally to my house. But that's the Zima board too. I did purchase this off the Kickstarter probably about five months ago, I want to say. I forget when I honestly did it. We waited a little bit, but I do have to say Ice Whale has been really good with their Kickstarter. They kept us up to date the entire process. And I've worked with Ice Whale in the past. I really like them as a company. I feel like they make great products. And I've liked every single one that I've worked with on them so far. This one today, the Zima board 2, wasn't sponsored by Ice Whale. I bought this with my own money. So this isn't like a sponsored video or anything from them. It's just me with a product that I genuinely like and share the information with you guys. Did you get a Zima board too? If you did, comment what you're going to do with yours down below so I can have some more ideas of projects I could do with mine. Like I said, today was just a quick overview. We didn't go anything too crazy. I just wanted to talk about the Zima board too for a brief overview because I believe now we're doing the full shipping from Ice Whale and everybody should be starting to receive theirs. I'm going to do some more content with it in the future. Like I said, it's brand new. I want to mess with it some more and see some of the other projects that I can do with it and kind of test its limits. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll have links to below to all the gear in my home lab. I'll have a link to the Zoom board too if you want to check one out. I'm not sure of the ordering process right now. I don't know if it's available just for purchase or it's still kind of in like the pre-order Kickstarter phase. But I'll take a look and I'll put the links down below. I'll have a link to the Discord if you want to join up in there. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.